Hey guys, welcome to writing. Today we finish chapter 20 and we find out how Percy fares in his battle with Ares, the god of war. Alright, so let's continue reading. They just started the battle. Ares swung his sword at Percy and Percy wasn't there. And we continue. My body thought for me. The water seemed to push me into the air, and I catapulted over him, slashing as I came down, but Ares was just as quick. He twisted, and the strike should have caught him directly on the spine, was deflected off the end of his sword hilt. He grinned. Not bad, not bad. He slashed again, and I was forced to jump onto dry land. I tried to sidestep to get back to the water, but Ares seemed to know what I wanted. He outmaneuvered me. Pressing so hard, I had to put all my concentration on not getting sliced into pieces. I kept backing away from the surf. I couldn't find any openings to attack. His sword had reached several feet long, or several feet longer than Anaclosmos. Get in close, Luca told me once. Back in our sword class. When you've got the shorter blade, get in close. I stepped inside with a thrust, but Ares was waiting for that. He knocked my blade out of my hand and kicked me in the chest. I went airborne, 20, maybe 30 feet. I would have broken my back if I hadn't crashed into the soft sand of a dune. Percy, Annabeth yelled. Cops! I was seen double. My chest felt like it had just been hit with a battering ram, but I managed to get onto my feet. I couldn't look away from Ares for fear he'd slice me in half. But out of the corner of my eye, I saw red lights flashing on the shoreline boulevard. Car doors were slamming. There, officer, somebody yelled, see? A gruff cop voice. Looks like that kid on TV. What the heck? That guy's armed, another cop said. Call for backup. I rolled to one side as Ares' blade slashed into the sand. I ran for my sword, scooped it up, and launched a swipe at Ares' face only to find my blade deflected again. Ares seemed to know exactly what I was going to do the moment before I did it. I stepped back to the turf, toward the surf, forcing him to follow. Admit it, kid, Ares said. You've got no hope. I'm just toying with you. My senses were working overtime. I now understood what Annabeth had said about keeping you alive in battle. I was wide awake, noticing every little detail. I could see where Ares was tensing. I could tell which way he would strike. At the same time, I was aware of Annabeth and Grover, 30 feet to my left. I saw a second cop car pulling up, siren wailing. Spectators, people who had been wandering the streets because of the earthquake, were starting to gather. Among the crowd, I saw a few who were walking with strange, trotting gait of disguised satyrs. There were shimmering forms of spirits, too, as if the dead had risen from Hades to watch the battle. I heard a flap of leathery wings circling somewhere above. More sirens. I stepped farther into the water, but Ares was fast. The tip of his blade ripped my sleeve and grazed my forearm. A police voice on the megaphone said, Drop the guns! Set them on the ground now! Guns? I looked at Ares' weapon, and it seemed to flicker. It seemed to be flickering. Sometimes it looked like a shotgun, sometimes a two-handed sword. I didn't know what the humans were seeing in my hands, but I was pretty sure it wouldn't make them like me. Ares turned to glare at our spectators, which gave me a moment to breathe. There were five police cars now, and a line of officers crouching behind them, pistols trained on us. This is a private matter, Ares Bella. Be gone! He swept his hands, and a wall of red flame rose across the patrol cars. The police barely had time to dive for cover before their vehicles exploded. The crowd behind them scattered, screaming. Ares roared with laughter. Now, little hero, let's add you to the barbecue. He slashed. I deflected his blade. I got close enough to strike, tried to fake him out with a feint, but my blow was knocked aside. The waves were hitting me in the back now. Ares was up to his thighs, wading in after me. I felt the rhythm of the sea, the waves growing larger as the tide rolled in, and I suddenly had an idea. Little waves, I thought, and the water behind me seemed to recede. I was holding back the tide by the force of will, but the tension was building like carbonation behind a cork. Ares came toward, grinning confidently. 
I lowered my blade as if I were too exhausted to go on. Wait for it. I told the sea. The pressure was now almost lifting me off my feet. Ares raised his sword. I released the tide and jumped, rocketing straight over Ares on a wave. A six-foot wall of water smashed him full in the face, leaving him cursing and sputtering with a mouthful of seaweed. I landed behind him with a splash and fainted towards his head. As I had done before, he turned in time to raise his sword, but this time he was disoriented. He didn't anticipate the trick. I changed direction and lunged to the side, stabbed Riptide straight down into the water, sending the point through the god's heel. The roar that followed made Hades' earthquake look like a minor event. The very sea was blasted back from Ares, leaving a wet circle, a sand of uh, a wet circle of sand fifty feet wide. Icar, the golden blood of gods, flowed from the gash in the war god's boot. The expression on his face was beyond hatred. It was pain, shock, complete disbelief that he'd been wounded. He limped toward me, muttering ancient Greek curses. Something stopped him. It was as if a cloud had covered the sun, but worse. Light faded, sound and color drained away a cold, heavy presence passed over the beach, slowing time, dropping the temperature to freezing, and making me feel like life was hopeless. Fighting was useless. The darkness lifted. Ares looked stunned. Police cars were burning behind us. The crowd of spectators had fled. Annabeth and Grover stood on the beach in shock, watching the water flood back around Ares' feet, his going, glowing golden ichor dissipating in the tide. Ares lowered his sword. You have made an enemy, godling, he told me. You have sealed your fate. Every time you raise your blade in battle, Every time you hope for success, you will feel my curse. Beware, Perseus Jackson. Beware. His body began to glow. Percy Annabeth shouted, Don't watch! I turned away as the god Ares revealed his true immortal form. I somehow knew that if I looked, I would be disintegrated into ashes. The light died. I looked back. Ares was gone. The tide rolled out and to reveal Hades' bronze helm of darkness. I picked it up and walked toward my friends, but before I got there, I heard the flapping of leathery wings. Three evil-looking grandmothers with lace hats, fiery whips, drifted down the sky and landed in front of me. The middle fury, the one who had Mrs. Dodds stepped, who had been Mrs. Dodd, stepped forward. Her fangs were brought bared, but for once she didn't look threatening. She looked more disappointed, as if she'd been planning to have me for supper, but I decided I might, I might give her indigestion. We saw the whole thing, she hissed. So, it truly was not you? I tossed her the helmet, which she caught in surprise. Return that to Lord Hades, I said. Tell him the truth. Tell him to call off the war. <clears throat> she hesitated, then ran a forked tongue over her green leathery lips. Live well, Percy Jackson. Become a true hero. Because if you do not, if you ever come into my clutches again, she cackled, savoring the idea. Then she and her sisters rose on their bat's wings, fluttered into the smoke-filled sky, and disappeared. I joined Grover and Annabeth, who were staring at me in amazement. Percy, Grover said. That was so incredibly terrifying, said Annabeth. Cool, Grover corrected. I didn't feel terrified. I certainly didn't feel cool. I was tired and sore and completely drained of energy. Did you guys feel that? Whatever it was, I asked. They both nodded uneasily. Must have been the Furies overhead, Grover said. But I wasn't so sure. Something had stopped Ares from killing me, and whatever could do that was a lot stronger than the Furies. I looked at Annabeth, and an understanding passed between us. I knew now what was in that pit, what had been spoken from this entrance of Tartarus. I reclaimed my backpack from Grover and looked inside. The master bolt was still there. Such a small thing to do, or such a small thing to almost cause World War III. We have to get back to New York, I said. By tonight. That's impossible, Annabeth said, unless we fly, I agreed. She stared at me. Fly like in an airplane, which you are warned never to do lest Zeus strike you out of the sky, and carrying a weapon that has more destructive power than a nuclear bomb? 
Yeah, I said. Pretty much exactly like that. Come on. All right, guys. That's the end of Chapter 20. We start Chapter 21 tomorrow. Uh, so we kind of get to the conclusion of the story. That was a pretty awesome fight. Percy stabbed and wounded a god. The god of war, which is pretty cool. All right. I need you guys to go into Google Classroom. Answer the exit slip question for writing today. You guys have a great afternoon, and we'll see you tomorrow.